One of the reasons that Python is so popular is because it has many useful built-in functions that allow us to perform tasks in a straightforward way without writing many lines of code. In this video, we will look at 7 different Python built-in functions that will help you write more Pythonic code. So let's get started. Number 1. All and Any The All function takes in an iterable like a list or a tuple and returns true if all the elements of the iterable are true, else it returns false. Let me show you what I mean. So let me create a list of booleans by saying boolean underscore list equals true and true. Now I'll say print all boolean underscore list. Let me run this code and we can see that we get true as all the elements are true. If I change the second element to false and run the code again, this time we get false. Similarly, the any function takes in an iterable and returns true if any element of that iterable is true. Let me change this all to any and see what we get. So here I will say print any boolean underscore list and this time when I press run, I get true because the first element is true and that is enough for any to be true. These functions come in handy very often. Suppose we want to check if a list has all odd numbers. We can do this task in just a single line using list comprehension and all. Let me show you what I mean. Let me first define a list. So I'll remove this old code and I'll say numbers equals 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Then let me say all underscore odd equals all. Now obviously I'll have to fill in the expression inside. Inside this all I'll say list comprehension n modulus 2 or the remainder when n is divided by 2 for n in numbers. And then let me print out all underscore odd. When I run this code I get true. Now let me replace one of the odd numbers by an even number and this time when I press run I get false as expected. We can also use the any function in the similar way. Number 2 enumerate. Before learning about enumerate, let's first understand where it is used. Suppose we have two lists called name underscore list and marks underscore list. So I rem let me remove this old code and here I'll say name underscore list equals Mary Anna and Alexandra. Similarly, their marks are stored in a list as marks underscore list equals 70, 45 and 96. Here students in name underscore list have marks from the marks underscore list of the corresponding index. So Mary's marks is 70, Anna's marks is 45 and Alexandra's marks is 96. Suppose we are writing a program that searches for a name and displays the corresponding marks obtained by the student. For this, I can write a for loop. So I'll say for student in name underscore list. And then because I'm searching for, say for example, Anna, I can say if student equals equals Anna, and then I can write something here. Now let's print the marks for Anna, but notice that we can't do it directly as we have looped over the iterable and not a range. So first I'll have to create a counter variable and increment it in each iteration. So I'll start with counter equals 0 and inside this if statement I'll say print marks underscore list and then I want the counter and if I get the marks then I want to break out of this loop and outside I need to increase the counter to counter plus equals 1. Now when I run this code, I get 45 which is the marks for Anna as expected. Now we could have done this same task more easily using enumerate. The enumerate function adds counter to an iterable and returns it. Due to this, we don't have to implement and keep track of a counter variable ourselves. First let me remove the counter variable. So here I'll remove this and obviously I can remove this as well. Now I'll wrap the name underscore list list with an enumerate. So I'll say enumerate 
enumerate returns an iterable with elements in the form of a tuple with counter variable and then the element itself. So, I can unpack these items instead of student I will now say counter comma student. So, counter comma student in enumerate name list. Now, let me run this code and our program works exactly like before. By the way, if you are finding this video useful, a sub to the channel would be much appreciated. The third useful built-in function is zip. The zip function takes in an arbitrary number of iterables with corresponding elements and aggregates them into tuples. Now that must have sounded really complicated, so I will show you with an example. Suppose we have two lists, so I can say number underscore list equals 1 comma 2 comma 3 and then the equivalent strings so I'll say str underscore list equals 1 2 and 3. Suppose we want to group the corresponding elements of the number list and string list for this we will use the zip function. So here I'll say result equals zip number list comma string list. Now, let me convert the returned zip object into a list and print it. So, I will say print list result. Now, when I run this code, I get a list of tuples. As you can see, the corresponding elements have been grouped together. You can do this with any number of iterables. Let me now show you how we can use zip to solve a problem from the previous section. I have this code from the previous section and let me replace enumerate by zip. So, I will say zip here and along with name list I want to add marks underscore list in the arguments. Finally, I will change counter comma student to student comma marks because the first list is the student and the second list is the marks. And instead of accessing the list like this, I can print the marks directly. Let me run this code and I get the same output as before. The fourth useful Python built-in function is dir. The dir function returns all the attributes and methods of an object and all the definitions inside a module or a package. Let's try it out. So, I'll go to my code editor and say numbers underscore list equals 1 comma 2 and then I can say print dir numbers underscore list. When I run this program, I can see all the attributes and methods that are available in a list. Let us now list out all the definitions of the math module. So, I will remove this old code and I will say import math and then I can say print dir math. Now, when I run I can see all the attributes and methods that the math module makes available to me. Another useful built-in method is the eval method. The eval method returns the string passed to it as a python expression within the program. Let me show you what I mean. So, on my code editor I will say x equals 1 and then I can say print eval and then instead of saying x plus 1 I will pass x plus 1 as a string. Let me run this code and you can see that 2 which is the expression x plus 1 evaluated is printed. Since this function allows us to execute any python expression as a string, we can make very interesting programs by taking input from the user and parsing them using eval. Let me demonstrate this to you, I will create a command line calculator in just 2 lines of python. First I will create an infinite while loop, so let me remove this old code, I will say while true. And inside this while loop, let me take input from the user. So, I will say input enter expression. Now, let me pass this value to eval. So, I will say eval input expression. Finally, let me just print the value returned by eval. So, I will say print eval input enter expression. And now, let me run this code. Now, let us try a few expressions, I will say 4 plus 5 and you can see that 9 has been printed. Let me try something more complex, so I will say 6 to the power of 3 
and voila you get 216. This calculator will work as long as our input is a valid python expression. Before moving to the next section of the video, the programmers team has created an app that allows you to learn python from your phone. The app contains bit size lessons that are easier to understand, a built in interpreter so that you can run python on your phone, quizzes and many more. The app is available on both iOS and Android, the links are in the video description. Another useful built in function is the map function. Before we learn about the map function, let me first show you why it might be useful. Suppose we have a list like this, so I will say numbers equals 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and we have to create a new list with all the squares of the numbers from this list. For this, we would normally do it this way, so I will say squared underscore nums equals an empty list. Similarly, I can say square equals, let me define the lambda function, I will say lambda n colon n raised to the power of 2. Now in a for loop, I will append all the values to the squared nums list, so I will say for num in numbers squared underscore nums dot append square of num. Let me go through this code once again. First, we started out with the list of numbers for which we wanted the squares. Then we defined an empty list that will contain the squared numbers. Next, we defined a lambda function that would convert any number to its square. Finally, we loop through the list and append all the square numbers to the list called square underscore nums. Let me show you how we can achieve this same task in a more elegant way using map. The map function applies a given function to each item of an iterable. Let me show you how it works. So I can remove all of this and I will just write squared underscore nums equals map. Now map takes two arguments. The first argument is the function that will convert each element of the list. So here it will be obviously the lambda function we wrote before. So lambda n that returns the square and the second argument will be the iterable itself. In this case it is numbers. Here the lambda function takes an argument and returns its square and the map function applies this lambda function on each element of the numbers list. Let me first convert this map object to a list and print it. So here I will say print list squared underscore nums and when I press run, I get the list of squared numbers. The last useful built in function that I want to talk about today is the filter function. The syntax of the filter function is similar to that of the map function. However, instead of creating a new iterator by applying the given function, the filter function filters out only the elements for which the function returns true. Now, I am sure that sounded like a lot of mumbo jumbo to you, so let me show you what I mean. Suppose we have a list of numbers like this, I will remove this old code and I will say numbers equals 234, 3245, I am just typing out a list of random numbers here, 690, 550 and say 654 and I want to filter out only the even numbers. For this, I would normally use the for loop and check if every item is even or not. Using the filter function, however, I can perform this task in a single expression. I will define even numbers as a filter and I will use the lambda function to check if it is even. So here I can say even underscore numbers equals filter lambda n n modulus 2 is 0 and then the second parameter just like with map is the list. This lambda function takes an argument n and returns true if that number is even and false if that number is odd. Now this filter function runs this lambda function on all the numbers one by one and filters out only those values for which this lambda function returns true. Since filter also returns an iterator, I will first convert it to a list. So let me say print list even underscore numbers and when I press run, I made a mistake, where did I, oh there is an extra colon, when I press run, 
you can see that I get the list of only the even numbers in this list. That's it for this video. If you want to revise these concepts, you can find all these programs in our GitHub repository. I'll also put this link in the video description below. And if you like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Happy programming.